I'm Scott Carlin, a local Hampton Bays resident for, let's just say, more than 20 years now. Uh, I'm a geographer and I teach at Long On University and I've been with ECI almost from its inception. Um, what I'm doing at this station here today is I'm your greeter and I'm here to engage you with what it is that you think Hampton Bays or the larger region should look like. So I invite you to share a first name and, and where you're from to get us going. Uh, I'm Amy, um, formerly of uh, Massapequa and Shadeville, now Matterville. Okay, great. And I'm Kate, we're sisters still the same. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then this is Greta and Gwendolyn. Nice to meet you all. Me too. And, and thank you for coming out to Hampton Bays to, to check this out. So, back home, <laughs> I have the slightly larger map for the region. Um, ECI has kind of focused on Hampton Bays as our focal point as an organization. <clears throat> and what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, figure out how to advance an ecological vision for Hampton Bays meaning how do we move away from some of the harsh chemicals that are used in the home or outside the home uh, how do we get more discerning with the products we bring in the home so they have less of an impact on our health and on the environment um, so i don't know how much you know about hampton bays but this is tiana bay over here this is shinnecock bay over here this is the pongquag uh, beach area over here we have uh, the Pine Barrens up here in green. This green area is all protected. And uh, I'm just curious, you know, what is your vision for, let's say, Eastern Long Island or the South Shore or South Hampton? Um, and we're gonna jot stuff down here. Uh, what, what is it that is kind of inspiring you to be here today? Uh, and what is it that inspires you for uh, uh, Eastern Long Island, uh, Long Island in the future. I I'm from Nassau County way back in time as well. Um, so I I'm really here to, to, to listen to you today, but I'm also here to absolutely answer any questions you might have. Um, well, I'd say what inspired us to come is um, I am getting more into vegetable gardening. Great. <laughs> um, and then um, I guess that's a, that's a big ask, um, but for Eastern Long Island, I guess, uh, I wouldn't say vision so much as concern would just be um, sea level rise and property loss. Okay. I don't know, what about you, Greta? No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, guess, I, I think I want to see all the pretty flowers. Pretty flowers? <laughs> So, oh, thank you. That was very kind. Get that to the camera. <laughs> um, so tell me some more. So you're into vegetable gardening. You know, one of the things, that, this is actually coming to us from Oregon. And in Eugene, Oregon, they've got a permaculture community going there. Uh, one of the values that ECI is trying to advance uh, for Hampton Bays and for Long Island, for the world, is is permaculture have you heard of permaculture before actually very recently okay what did you hear about permaculture uh just the idea that it's you know moving beyond uh like let's say gardening and making it more like a part of your life that's and right join the permaculture subreddit <laughs> oh wow so, uh, like a week ago okay that's fantastic i'll have to check that out myself <laughs> I, i'm not on the permaculture subreddit <laughs> um so you're you're thinking holistically about this parcel of land that you live on and then the parcels of land that are adjacent to you and kind of move out from there to your community to your region uh, again the basic ethos i was describing before how do, how do we lower the toxic burdens um, but how do we make sure that the things that we're doing kind of align with health and ecology 
Um, are you aware of uh, permaculture or organic? Is your farm? Are you trying to do gardening organically? How's that going? Yeah, you know, it's not, it's not bad. Uh, I've only been gardening a couple of years, and uh, I, I use like a Do you have helpers? Um, a little bit of weeding here, uh -huh. um, and definitely scaring the birds out of there. Okay. So that's really been helpful. <laughs> um, she saved a lot of cherry tomatoes that way. That's this, awesome. This one is the, I have the opposite problem. She ripped my radishes out of the ground. Oh, wow. And in the sturgeon, and she's basically trouble. So it's like another bird. Okay. <laughs> they, they, they're they're kind of neutral. They, they neutral themselves out. But she gets really excited to be out in the garden. Yes. So we want to hold on to that. <laughs> just just direct it a little more yeah. constructively. <laughs> she pulled all the leaves off of a cucumelon seedling. She's really she's really a danger. <laughs> <laughs> um, so part of the ethos here is also energy systems. Um, are, are you familiar with solar panels that have gone up uh, near your homes? And, and have you kind of been aware of, of how that's changing? Have you followed New York State uh, investing in offshore wind? What do you know about that? Um, I think it's, the, it's by the recycling center. They put a solar panel. Oh, yeah. In Manorville, yeah. like I think they're putting, or they were putting in like some solar panels for the okay. recycling center. I, don't quote me on that. <laughs> I am actually. <laughs> um, near there. Are you familiar with New York State moving to offshore wind? Um, no, I've just I've heard you know the, the NIMBY issue with the wind farm. Yeah. So off the coast of Montauk, about 30 miles east of Montauk, uh, they're actively constructing a, a wind farm there. It will tie in, I believe, in East Hampton, um, and then the power will move out to Montauk and it'll move uh, west from there until basically all those electrons of, of energy get gobbled up by homes. But I'd say there's a very good chance that when you flip on the lights in Manorville in a couple of years, uh, that actually will be powered um, in part or in whole by offshore wind. So the south shore of Long Island and portions of the North Fork are, are moving pretty rapidly. Uh, it's not to 100% renewable just yet, uh, to the majority of our energy coming from offshore wind. And then what we need to do is we need to invest a lot more in energy efficiency. That's really the best investment we can make. Uh, Long Island and New York State offer uh, free audits of your home to find ways to reduce energy consumption. Um, and then solar and other technologies to fill in the, the remaining part. But in just a couple of years, something like 2022 or 2023, we're gonna make this leap forward. And then New York State is committed to uh, making much more substantial investments in offshore wind after that. So they're already scouting out other sites for offshore wind. So renewable energy is coming to Long Island in a big way. An academic I follow at Stanford University has thought that New York State as a whole should get 40% of its energy from offshore wind. So that would all be off the coast of Long Island. That would be a huge industry for us. And uh, we'll have to just see how all that plays out. Um, okay, timeline for, for some of the, um, like the wind, wind farms that are coming in to be completed? The... Um, like I say, the, the, this array that they're putting in mm -hmm. by Block Island, it's, it's something like 2022 was the last date I saw for that to be completed. You know, and now that you mentioned it, Probably four years ago, but he was an engineer and he said he was going up to Rhode Island to, to work on wind turbines. Oh. So I, it was. It's, this will it was, it also was provide energy to Rhode Island, this same right, project. Was, that, when you said Block Island, I remembered. Um, yeah, so I guess they've been working on it for a long, long time. And Block Island is already 100% wind power. So they did a, like a demo project there, uh, kind of proof that this can work in the United States, not just in Europe. 
Uh, and this is really the first large offshore wind array in the United States that they're constructing right now. So it's a big deal. So let's get back to the vision question. Um, so, you know, this vision is, is that every home would uh, do what you're doing, uh, gardening, uh, thinking about permaculture, learning about what that means, um, uh, being aware of local water quality, water conservation issues. Uh, so, so help us as ECI to build a vision that's going to resonate with you. I want you to dream with us today. Yeah. In, in our seven minutes remaining. I, I think What's has, your dream for their future? Yeah, I think it has a lot to do with them. It, it does, because we've been, you know, with this whole pandemic going on, and there were shortages and, and uh, things that we, we had come to take for granted for so long that we could no longer necessarily rely on. Um, so... Like we, what? Well, like, uh, you go to the grocery store and they might not have everything that's on your list. And that was never a problem before. So, you know, we're lucky that it has never been a problem before. And obviously in other parts of the world, that is that is a way of life, but it has not been our way of life yeah. until now. So just trying to be a little more self-sufficient and, um, you know, uh, grow food and then even starting to save some seeds for the future. Um, we don't know instead of being able to buy all the seedlings that we normally buy you couldn't even a lot buy of the, the plants seed. were everybody wanted a garden this year yeah so <laughs> they couldn't keep seeds. up with that demand yeah. yeah saving seeds so that we don't have that saving problem. seeds is something eci has already been mm -hmm. doing um, the issue of sea level rise so we've touched upon that with the renewable energy the energy efficiency um, have you ever do, do you own where you live or do you rent we own I think you know we our family has property in Montauk okay um, and you know there's a really good exhibit at um, the lighthouse on you know, some of the fortifications they tried to do to stabilize the coastline yes um, so I think because because of, of uh, growing up out there, out there um, you know it's more of a concern for us, we're we're more inland in Manorville, but with the and, and even so with the, the property in Montauk, but it's just such a a big issue about um, the recent stabilization project they did out there. Um, I, I went to the town hall to, to ask them not to because it was it just seemed like a terrible idea. And and one season later, the um, sand that they had put on top of like very large sandbags had all been gone, and now there's like a sandbag beach instead of a nice beach. Right. Um, so just. You know, some of That's the, a real danger for Long Island. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, it's a shame because there's, you know, Europe, uh, the Netherlands, they do a lot of, they have a lot of good ways of thinking for stabilizing the coastline without, uh, for some reason, a lot of hard stabilization and these seawalls and sandbags, and, and it really exacerbates the prob problem on the long term, whereas if we could do some more soft stabilization with bringing in sand and changing the way we even think about why do you need to build so close to the ocean in the first place? Because yes. Don't really have the right to be yeah, there. So, so Montauk did talk about um, yeah. moving some of the businesses away from that coast, yeah. which was very, I think, it's progressive. So, it's very progressive, but it's so controversial because we have this idea in our brains that we own the land that we're standing on, and it's, it's like, well, if the Earth wants to take it away, <laughs> you just you don't own anything really. If it erodes or it disappears under storm surge or. You know, the, the earth is ever changing, but we have such a permanence to what our land is. So it's really difficult to get people to think differently about that. So um, I just, I wonder and I worry for, I guess, the shoreline. Uh, so um, there's no stopping sea level rise. What we can begin to do is slow the potential for sea level rise, but sea level rise is coming. Um, and we should not be doing the shoreline hardening. Um, have you spoken out publicly in any way, letter writing, petition signing, going to town hall meetings on the issue of what's happening with the coast? Just uh, just the one um, East Hampton town hall meeting. Okay, uh, a that's great. Ago. A couple of years ago? Mm -hmm. When they were, uh, the before the bags went in in Montauk. Just okay. A, it was, I, I was one of many, there were dozens and dozens of uh, residents that couldn't even fit us all in the meeting because it was, you know, it was a, it was a money grab. There was money available, and they didn't 
want to um, federal money and they didn't want to lose it. Yeah. But the plan wasn't a good plan. So of course, in, instead of waiting for a good plan and possibly losing those federal dollars, they just went with a bad plan. So, so a lot of people were unhappy. This is an ongoing issue. The <laughs> best thing to do is get a couple of neighbors and say, hey, we want this back on the public agenda. We want to take a look at, you made some promises to us. Let's take a look at how those promises are doing. We're definitely going to need to think about this long term. And we personally think we should be choosing a different path. So, so part of the progress is, you know, what can we do, you know, with our own land? Um, and part of it is, you know, the education part, you know, reading and watching TV. Uh, and then part of it is also getting out and uh, letting public officials know, you know, where it is that public, public sentiment is. Um, what questions do you have? Um, I guess we don't, you know, I, I read about this in the paper and I have a little bit of you guys, so I guess yeah. I, a little bit, I, I, you've already gone through your mission statement a little bit, but just, I guess, a little bit more about what you missed. Sure. Have you seen our website? Uh, yes, but not, I didn't. Did you like the website? I did like the website. Uh, Jeff has been one of our, our <laughs> main contributors to the website. I, I think we have an awesome website. You do. Uh, so it, it, it does have kind of high impact for me in terms of the messaging and the issues and the, you know, the overall design. So well done to Jeff. Um, we've run a, a series of films and we've done kind of engagements. I've helped uh, run uh, one or two of those engagements with the public. So uh, seed saving, all kinds of different topics. Of course, we can't do public gatherings in the same way. So we've had to tone that down for right now. Um, we do have a, a seed library. It has been in the Hampton Bays Library. So you might think about, uh, again, getting uh, together with us and, and some other uh, local folks in Manorville to create a, a small seed library for, for yourself there. Um, we're doing this wonderful garden that you're going to learn about. Uh, we've started a composting program that you're going to learn about today. Uh, we take the produce from here and we donut, donate it to the local pantry. So we're trying to be of service to what the needs are, you know, so there aren't provisions available, there aren't jobs available, so there's a lot more uh, food deficits. Um, I'm personally concerned about food deserts, so communities that have um, limited access to fresh vegetables and fruits. So that's a, a regional, it's a national issue. Um, I think I'm gonna leave it at that because I want you to move on to your next station, but feel free to come on back if, if other things come up to chat about. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Yeah. <laughs>